Hello, Nikolai Markovich from Echo Lake Technologies, echolaketech.com. And in this video, I'm going to show you how to use Mix Panel in your Bubble app. Basically, Mix Panel allows you to go and track uh, user clicks uh, throughout your app, um, which can be uh, very useful to you to provide information on how your users are actually interacting with your app. This can also be used if you wanted to do some A-B testing, for instance, and you had two different ways of uh, user onboarding, and you wanted to see which uh, way was more effective. You could actually create two different uh, onboarding uh, workflows or uh, interfaces, and then you could track your users and to see which one is uh, more effective. So let's just get right in and uh, the plugin, I've already got it installed on here, but just to, to show you, add plugins, mix panel. Now there, there are two of these and the one I'm going to show you in this video is uh, the bubble created uh, mix panel plugin. Uh, so it's already installed. And basically with it, you're going to have uh, keys. So one of the things you'll need to do is to go to mixpanel.com and create an account. You can use a free account. They do have a free account, and that's what I'm using in this demo. And you'll get keys uh, to use. Um, and then you plug them in uh, over here. It's pretty straightforward and, and simple to do. Uh, once those keys are in, um, it's actually going to enable some workflows, uh, which I'll show you in a moment. Uh, what I did in this demo is just a couple of buttons here and a, a drop down to show you information that's going to uh, go from your app to, uh, to Mixpanel. And you can look at that in, and I'll show you in, in Mixpanel. So basically what we have here, let me just go to the workflows, is for button number one, uh, the first thing I do, and this is just a, a habit, I, I created a, a custom state uh, to go and basically prevent double clicking. So if somebody quickly hits a button uh, more than once, it doesn't do a, a double click. So I've uh, put this in here, this uh, custom state to, to stop it. Um, and then we have one of the um, steps here. And, and basically, let me just go here for a moment to show you. These are actually under analytics. So typically, you'll be using a lot of these other choices here. And analytics is usually not populated with anything. When you have Mixed Panel installed, you're going to get some of these options here. So send an event. So basically, like when a uh, button is clicked, um, or an input value is changed. That would be an event that gets sent to Mixpanel. Uh, sending user information, so say current user logged in. Um, and then user charge. Uh, so basically, if you are um, uh, doing some financial transactions in your app, you know, charging a user or they're buying something, you can actually track that and send it to, to Mixpanel. And then you can delete a, a user as well uh, from, your, from your app. All right, so let's go back over here and let's see here. Okay, send event to mix panel. So when button one's pressed, um, we're going to send an event to mix panel. Now, what I've done in here, you see there's send another value. So what I did was I created uh, these two other values to send, and these are, are made up. I'll just do, you know, I'll say test here. And then current user's birthday, because I have that in, set up in the database. Uh, so basically, these are all on the left-hand side. These are all typed in. Like user, I just typed that in. It's not one of the standard user definitions. I just typed these in. And basically, you assign a value. And what I did here is um, when uh, button one is pressed, I have this uh, this value called button one val one, and all it's got is a text field button one pressed, and then for user I've just got their email, and then for test uh, their birthday, and I'm just going to actually delete that for the moment. 
The next thing is I'm going to send uh, the uh, name, the email, current user's email, uh, to Mixpanel as well. And then when it's done, I'm just going to have a, an alert that pops up for a few seconds and uh, says that, hey, um, the alert button uh, was, was pressed. Um, and that's it for button one. Button two, uh, similar. I, um, again, I stop the double click. And then over here, I have button two, value one, and I'm just sending the current date and time, and then also the user's email. Now notice user here, it's the same as user over here. So these can get reused um, as, as well. Okay, so button two, and then similarly, I have an alert. Um, and then what I've done on this one is at the end of the, um, this workflow here, I actually go and set the value uh, no for this uh, state. And what that's going to do is allow that button uh, two to get clicked again. And I'll show you that once we get uh, into the design, the, the uh, conditional for the in the design for that button. Lastly, I have this uh, drop down, and basically, when the when this input is changed, so when the you pick a value uh, in the drop down, I'm going to send this value, the drop down's value, and then I'm also going to send the user information, um, and then I'm going to have um, this alert pop up for that as well. Okay, now. This one here I didn't cover yet. Basically, what I want to show you is if you're not familiar with the custom states and this whole thing about uh, the double click, uh, what, the, what I've done here is I've got another button that when I click it, it's going to change the, the state to, to no. And basically, no means to uh, that the buttons are now, uh, you, can, you can click them again. They're active. They're hot, if you will. And Let's go over here. Um, so button, again, this is basically a text field that's going to show the value of the yes or no. Um, and on page startup, I'm just going to go over here for a moment to show you. So mix panel is my page. Mix panel here is my page. And if you click this info icon, you can see the custom state. Stop double click. It's text field, and the default value is no. So whenever the page refreshes, it's going to show here that button state is going to be mixed panels stop double click, which the default value is no. And then when I press these buttons here, that value is going to change to yes, because that's the first step in the workflow. And then basically when I cl click on this button here, it's going to turn it to no. And I just wanted to put this in here. It's not so much uh, for mix panel, but just to kind of uh, show you how this uh, custom state works because it's useful. I find it very useful in a lot of my, my apps so people don't accidentally double click, especially if you're creating new things. You don't want your users to accidentally double click um, and you get multiple new things created. All right, enough of that. Actually, uh, over here, choices. Um, I just throw in three choices um, for the drop down. Uh, one other point I should make for the conditional back to the custom state. So basically, when the custom state value is yes, then this element isn't clickable. Again, prevent the double click. And when the value is no, then the element is clickable. You can click it, it's, uh, it's good to go again. All right. Uh, one thing I want to point out also is since this is a bubble plugin, this is uh, Bubble's reference document here, and they've got a section on plugins. Uh, so mix panel, it's right here. It talks about sending an event, send a user to mix panel, send a user charge. So again, dollar amount, and then deleting a user. So one of the nice things about using bubble plugins is that they do have some documentation uh, within their, their uh, manual, which is, which is useful. Okay, now let's go over here. And basically what I have here is, again, button uh, state is no. When I click button one, it should turn to yes. 
button pressed. And now basically I'm just clicking on button one and, and nothing's happening. Same with button two, nothing's happening. If I hit the reset state, it goes to no. And I click on button two, for instance, button pressed. Now remember, there's a difference between the workflow in button one and button two. So the reason why the state is no right now is because at the end of the workflow on button two, I set the value of it to no, whereas in button one, I didn't. And that's why it's stuck there at yes until I click that. Similarly, choice one, the inputs changed. So I, I sent that choice one over to... Um, to mix panel. Now, here is after you've logged in and created an account and logged in to uh, mix panel, uh, basically over, over here to users and click on explore. That's basically where I am right now. I'm going to refresh. Um, I am not going to do an in depth tutorial on mix panel. This is basically just to set this up so that you can get information from your bubble app. Uh, to um, to mix panels dashboard here. Um, now on here, uh, I was doing some testing earlier today. I'm going to use user three. That's the one that's uh, logged in right now. So I click on this. I come up to another another screen, and this gives me information on user one. Now some of this is older information from earlier in the day today, um, but just to show you the drop down value, okay and the choice was one, all right? And this was the user, user three, test three, that's the user for it. So you can see that the information, plus a lot of other kind of information that may or may not be useful for you, the type of browser that's used, the version of it, um, and so on and so forth. So let's just close that and then button one, all right? So again, button one, value one, button one press, I just type this in uh, back in, uh, in the app. I could put whatever I want in there, dynamic values, whatever you want. User three is in there as well. And then button two. Um, again, button two value one was the date. So there it is in there and the user as well. And these other things, so like um, earlier, button one was pressed four times. So you can see that just got information on each one of those buttons as well. But you know that you can see from here that button four was pressed um, four times. So again, this is very powerful to go and see what your users are doing uh, within your app and then sending it over to Mixpanel and collecting this information um, so then you can do some analysis on it, A-B testing um, and, and whatnot. Um, well, I should mention over here in the lower right corner, one of the buttons, I don't recall which one it was, but one of them also sent over uh, revenue or dollar information. So this is, it was $100 and I've just been kind of accumulating up the, uh, the total revenue. So some of the earlier values, um, I had some different dollar amounts earlier. So that's why it's a $704.95 and not $700 uh, even. Um, so it's, it's kind of nice to be able to send that information, revenue information over as, as well. Um, so that's basically it, how you, how you set up Mixpanel uh, in your, your bubble app. Very powerful for doing analytics and um, seeing what your, your users are doing. And then you can go and make your app even uh, better for your users and their experience. And thank you again for watching to the end of the video. And we will see you in the next video.